when Bruiser Brody got stabbed in Puerto Rico, I rested a sheep that night. Really? And the the way, like I said, the, the people were separated. You had a baby face dress room, you had a heel dress room. So any heel, any heel that talk about Brody is telling a lie. You understand? Yeah. The heel fan out from the sheep. Because when I came back from the hospital, uh it pissed me off. I got pissed off. Uh because all the guys were laughing and joking. Like nothing happened. You know, that it was like it never happened. So that pissed me off when I hear the guys patting each other on the back and talk about what a great match they had and all this and that stuff and blah 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 blah. blah. So Carlos said, Oh, I didn't expect you back. He said, so we could do your match. So he told the referee, go tell the sheep that Tony here, we could do his, do the match now. That match lasts probably about two minutes because not even that, I locked up with the sheep and the sheep heard about me, he didn't know the story. So he said, he said, oh, Atlas, uh, what happened with the Brody? And I said, Jose stabbed him. <laughs> Once I said that, the sheep said, hey, motherfucker, stand my friend, the bruiser of a brody. That motherfucker, give me a headbutt. We go home. So I gave him a headbutt. We fought back to the ring. And the sheep went to the uh, the heel dress room and told the heels what happened. You understand? Yeah. But that's how we found out. We, you, so that's why I always see these guys talking about they was there and this way. I pulled brody out of the shower. You understand? I hear mm -hmm. people say, well, Brody, Brody didn't say nothing to nobody but me. He came straight to me. I was sitting within six feet of him. I was the closest person to him when it happened. I was sitting right at the shower door. Everybody else was scared. When they asked, Brody was so heavy. See, when, they, when we had shows, they uh, didn't sing good paramedics. The paramedic was an old man and a overweight, I would say, mother-aged woman. When they put Brody on the girder, they couldn't lift him up. But Brody at that time probably about 210, I mean about 315, 320, you know, six foot eight. So I went over and I pulled the girder up for them. Somebody, the, I remember the, the, the old man asking, can somebody help? This is what if I don't if they told me they in the dressing room, if they tell you they were in that dressing room, this is what they did. The the man said, Can somebody help us put him in, in the ambulance? Everybody in the dress room did this. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Everybody. So if somebody got on your social they were in that dress room, ask them why they didn't help. Yeah. Who else, Hello. Who, who else was in the dressing room? So apart from the locals, so I know Dutch well, was these there. Are people that, these are the people that I know for sure that was in the dressing room. Uh, Mark and Jay Youngblood. Nobody ever interviewed these guys. That's Rick Romero's son. Mm. I was drawing a picture of them when and uh, Brody walked over and he said, Wow, I didn't know you could draw like that. He said, I have drawings done on my son, drawings done on my son, but they, they, he said they're character drawn with the big head and a little body. He said, can you do a picture of my son uh, for me? And I said, you got one with you? He said, yes, because we, you know, I have just left world class and I had, and I was blackballed by Vince, so, didn't know, you know, I was on the shit list for every promoter because of my attitude and my you know, I don't know if you know that I got a, I used to have a very bad temper. You know, I would fight and drop the hat. I got, you know, I, I would just lose it, you know, and, and, and getting that I don't give a shit mode. I, I, I'm, I'm controlling it a lot. You know, I have gotten control of, of, of my temperament. But anyway, make a long story short, he would, he reached in his pouch to pull out a picture. And Jose came, came by and said, Brody, can I talk to you for favor? Real nice, like. I mean, very nice night. Brody still was holding his bag because we had just walked in the door. He was still holding his bag in his hand, and he said, sure. Brody took one step in the shower. He took two steps in the shower. As soon as that sucker foot touched the ground, as soon as that foot touched the ground, this is what I hear, and I was within six feet of him. Uh, uh, 
The second Tammy Haller, the first Tammy Haller, I looked up. The second Tammy Haller, he bent over. I've sprung from my seat because Jose raised the knife like this and I saw the knife in his hand. I reached over with one arm and I wrapped it around Brody waist and I yanked him out of the shower. The knife came down and cut off Pablo's ponytail. Wow. Carlos Colon cut me off and ran in the shower and pushed Jose up against the wall and said, no, Jose, no, Jose. I took Brody. Brody looked me in the eyes and said, I'm hurt, brother. Don't let them, not him, then, don't let them hurt me anymore. I laid him on the floor. I stood over him. Carlo tried to talk to him. I said, Carlo, if you come over here, I'm going to knock your fucking head off your shoulder. I'm going to rip your head off your throat and shit down your throat. Brody tagged my pants leg and tell me, let him talk. Carlos walked over to Brody. Carlos said, is there anything I can do for you? Brody said to Carlos Colon, take care of my family. The ambulance took about 45 minutes to come because it was at the beginning of the show. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when the ambulance guys got there, they asked another thing. They asked uh, would everybody like to go with him? I jumped up on every, everybody in the dress room once again. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Play deaf, dumb, and blind. I jumped on the back of the van where there was a wrestler. His name was Hercules something. He had like a V-shape. His son wrestled too. I can't think of his last name, but was, his first name, they used to call him Hercules. I grabbed him and pulled, and pulled him on the elevator with me. He said, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. He said, I said, I own him. Oh, yeah, another guy, Roberto Soto was there. Roberto Soto was in the dress room. But Roberto was commute, helped me to talk to the uh, the ambulance driver. Yeah. Yeah, Roberto Soto uh, was there. Um, uh, I, the, them, the three guys I know for sure was in the dress room. Called. I seen them, you know, when, when the action was going. Because a lot of the guys, like Dutch was there, but I think Dutch walked out. So was Dutch in the heel dressing room at this time? Because he's always said that he just... He was in a baby face. Right. He was in a baby face. This guy was in a baby face. Yeah. Our, 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 our dressing room. But but anyway, to, to make a long story short, I pulled him on the thing with me. He said, I don't want to give up. I said, all I want to do is to interpret for me. I can't speak Spanish. You know? Yeah. And so he, he went to the hospital with me. Now, what happened to him, a, a month later, he got shot in the back five times. Wow. Now, earlier that day, Brody worked out in the gym with me. Earlier that day. This is what Brody told me. He said, because things didn't go good, me and Brody. In fact, you believe it or not, we made up that day. <laughs> but we got in a, we, yeah, we got in a, you can ask, what was his name? Earl, 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 uh, he was in world class. Uh, he was a tag team with the Thumper. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that one. His name was Eric somebody. Eric, Eric Embry. Embry, that's him. There you yeah, go. yeah. Yeah, he told me to leave because they called the police on me because I wanted to fight Brody because I was tag team with the, the Dingo Warrior, which later became the Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. We were tag team partners, and they stopped booking us. So the the Ultimate Warrior was getting ready to go to uh, uh, J uh, Japan, and Vince heard about it and heard about him. So Vince told him, say, if you give up your trip to Japan, I can bring you here. You can make more money. Well, I had no place to go. After doing the Black Atlas gimmick, you know, after George Scott left, he left Brody in charge. So I went to uh, 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 Puerto Rico. Carlos told me I could come there to work full time, and that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, this was going to be me. All I had left was Puerto Rico, you know. And so Brody came up to me, held out his hand, and said, "Look, I saw it, but what happened with you in Texas?" He said, "But it won't happen here." He said. There's going to be a lot of changes. These Brody words, he can't speak up, so I'm speaking for him. There's going to be a lot of changes. He said, what happened in Texas, I had nothing to do with. 
He said, I just did as I was told because Kurt Von Erk was in an accident and lost a foot. So he was coming back and the Ontario Warrior was a muscle man. Tony Atlas a muscle man. All three of us got the same gimmick. That's why Abdul the Butcher and Kamada did not get along because they had the same gimmick. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And, and, and so anyway, he said, there going to be a lot of changes here. He said, I waited. Now you figure out what this means. I waited a long time to get down, to get here. He said, I waited a long time to get in here. Now, he, I know he wasn't talking about wrestling. He'd been going in Puerto Rico for a year. So the only thing I can think about, he bought into the company. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And he said, I'm either going to get what I want or I'm going to beat the hell out of him. When I saw Dutch Mantel and Brody at the Tanamont sitting on the steps, I said, Brody, why are you here? Because I called Carlos earlier. I told him I'd be a little bit late. Because the guy from the muscle factory that owned the gym, he would go. He wanted to go to see me wrestle, and I told him, I said, "Hey, if you give me a ride to buy your mom, then you can get in free with me." He said, "It's okay. I bring my wife or girlfriend." I said, "Yes." So I saw when I when I left the beach, and 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 went upstairs to chain. Brody was sitting on the steps with uh, Dutch Mantel. So I said, "Brody, why are you still here?" He said. I'm waiting on Jose. I'm waiting on Jose. Jose was his ride. You understand? Right. I said, well, I'll tell you what. You want to ride with us? I said, I go, I go in and I let the guy know at the front there that if, if Jose come, that you already gone with me. He said, okay. He said, you don't mind if I ride with you? I said, no, 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 brother. I don't mind. So when the, my ride came, the guy came, he was driving. His wife was sitting in the front seat, or girlfriend. She slid over to the center. Brody got in the front seat because he couldn't fit in the back, you know. <laughs> you couldn't put him in the back. We had to put him at the front. So he said, and me and Dutch sat in the back seat. And that was in the middle. When I walk in the dressing room, Jose, uh, Carlos Colon, and there's a red-headed guy that was piled off and named Victor. I don't know what his, how to say his last name. There was two Victor. And one was Victor Jerico, but I thought Jerico was a young kid with the black hair. This guy had kind of reddish hair, kind of like Chicky Star. You know, he was light-skinned Puerto Rican guy. Mm -hmm. But they were sitting in a football huddle. And as soon as Brody walked through that door, all three people done this. Like they saw a ghost. Jose immediately got up and walked out of the dressing room. That's when I went and sat there and started doing the drawing. See, Brody, Jose was Brody ride. They rode together that week. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And that's the truth. And I always swear, you know what I always wanted to do? Guess what I always wanted to do? Go on, tell me. I always want to tell that story on the Steve Walko show. Steve Walker. I don't know the Steve Walker show. You'll have to explain. Well, on. here in America, he used to be a policeman, and he used to be a, a bodyguard for. Uh, oh, was it Jerry, Jerry Springer. Springer? Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, he started Steve, with Jerry Steve Springer, Wilcox, but, but he do the Steve live Wilcox. detecting machine, and and the guy that do the live detecting is a, is one of the number one guys in the world. He do stuff for the FBI and everybody. I always want to get on that show, and everybody that would talk about bro to get on that show and take a live detector test. Hey, Tony, can I ask uh, this? Something, a, a couple of things I want to clarify. You said that uh, I'll ask two questions. You can you can refer to them both. So you said that Bro, uh, Brody made two noises. Um, does does that mean he was stabbed twice? Yes, there was two eight inch cut. How I found out the doctor, cause I was going nuts. I scared the brother. I was six two. 285 pounds <laughs> with a 650 bench. And I was madder than a, a horn toad. I got angry. Like I said, I got this temper. Most guys would tell you that talking to me now, you wouldn't think so. I'm what you call it extremely. I'm either extremely nice or extremely the other way. There's no yeah. no mother to Tony Atlas. You, you ever met people like that? I'm either all the way this way or there's nothing yeah. in between. Extremes. <laughs> Just like Extremes. Here. Right, yeah, it's like 
It's just like here, there's nothing in here either, you know. If I, you know, like Ern Laird say, if my IQ was one point less, I'd be a banana, you know. But but uh, in, anyway, there are, um, what was that question? I, I went well, brain well, dead um, on Well, you, you've already sort of confirmed it, that he was stabbed twice. The other thing I want to clarify. Yeah, well, anyway, the doctor came out and said there was two eight-inch cuts. One cut the intestines. The other one cut the liver. He said, we got the, the it one under control. He said, your friend is stable. He's stable. That was a doctor telling me now. He said, he said, now he said, I gotta get back in there to take up to fix up the uh to fix the liver. He said, but he's gonna be okay. He said, he's gonna be okay. I said, oh good. He said, but I need you to leave. I said, right. I said, no, I want to save my friend. He said, you got everybody afraid of you. Yeah, your size, your temperament. He said, because I was getting mad. I wanted to know what's going on. I wanted, I almost went into the operating room. I came that close. That when the doctor saw me peeking through the window. So he couldn't do his operation because of me. So I said, well, I don't want to do something that caused Brody death. So I said, you sure he's okay? He said, yes, come back tomorrow. You can see your friend tomorrow. So I left. Now, here's something that most people don't know. And then I hear you, I hear the interview with uh, Sabio Vega. Yeah. Which confirmed what I said. He said that two minutes after I walked out the door, he was a guy that cleaned up what alternate or alternate guy. Mm -hmm. He cleaned up the operating room. He said two minutes after I left the hospital, two security guys, this is his word, two security guys went in the operating room and told them to leave and stop working on the American. Really? So that tells me Brody was not killed. He didn't die from the knife room. They sent people, whoever was in behind it, sent people to the hospital to finish the job. Can he said two security people came into the right after I left. So evidently they were watching me. Hmm. They left Brody at the hotel. The incident supposed to, and my man could be wrong. It's supposed to happen. Why would you leave a, a person like Bruiser Brody at the hotel? Why would two security guards wait for me to leave to go into the hospital? Then when I get back, there was a policeman that lift weight. He said, Tony, I was going to talk to you later at the hotel. I got everybody. He said, I got everybody's statement. Everybody's statement. That's what he said, not me. I don't have yours. I said, well, I give you yours. He said, did you see what happened? I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, what happened? I said, excuse my language. I said, that motherfucker right there stabbed him. The police said, you mean Vader? I said, yeah, that motherfucker right there stabbed him. I said, ask anybody in the dressing room. He said, I did. He said, everybody in the dressing room said a wrestling fan did it. And he was brag he was stabbed, he was stabbed when he came in the dressing room. Mm. You talk to Barbara Goodish. Talk to Barbara Goodish. She would tell you, she went to the police station. The police, this is what Barbara Goodish told me now, Brody's wife. She got no reason to lie to me. She said only one American came down to, to tell what happened. One. One. Mm -hmm. came, went to the police station. Anybody else say they went to the police station? They lied. They lied. I would tell them to they face the land because I was there. You've, you've heard the this. only reason I went to the p p police station is because Seeker, who is the father of Roma Rain, went with me as my bodyguard. Seeker stuck with me the whole time to protect me. Nobody, the reason I got out of Puerto Rico is because of Seeker. Hmm. I got no reason to lie. You understand? Yeah. A lot of guys want to jump in on stuff because it's popular to make themselves popular. They were they, they nobody helped him. Brody had one friend. One. Ask Baba Goodish. Mm -hmm. 
One. You you know uh, you know Ric Flair once claimed that he was in the locker room that day, which has since proved that he wasn't. That, I don't know why he was saying something like that. You could look at the records of where he was booked that day. I know. Come on now. There, there, there's wrestling cars out there. You could look at the car for Buy Your Moon. Why would Ric Flair there would have got Brody and Abdullah and the Sheik? Exactly. Why would why would they book Ric Flair there? When they got all them top names, the Iron Sheik, the Wilds, the Alpha, some more. Bruiser Brody, for God's sake. Abdullah the Butcher was there. You know? Mm -hmm. The Iron Sheik was there. Flair was nowhere there. I've never seen Flair in Puerto Rico. I went there a lot. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't work that little bit of ass territory at his tab. They, first caller was not paid. <laughs> the only way Flair would be there if Vince booked him. <laughs> you know what Carlos paid? You think Rick Flair gonna work for three hundred bucks a match? Uh huh. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, as Rick Flair, as in what was his payday? Oh, he probably he probably say thirty thousand or something like that. I'm sure. From Carlos Cologne? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't hold your breath, brother. Come on. <laughs> See, sometimes guys will say things because they think you guys marks. They think y'all too stupid to look it up. Look it up. Mm -hmm. He was not there. I'm I a... never in my life saw saw Flair in Puerto Rico. Never in my life. And I went there a lot. I, I was a tag team champion. 